Cardinal Ma and Pa were married on February 1st, 1860. Charles Ingalls was 24 when he married Caroline, who was only 21 at the time. Their first daughter, Mary Amelia, was born in 1865. Their second daughter, Laura, came along in 1868, and then two years later, Charles moved the family to Missouri. While living in a town near what is known as Independence, Kansas, the Ingalls welcomed their third daughter, Carrie, in 1870. After Charles and Carolyn determined that Kansas wasn't welcoming settlers, they spent the next few years moving from state to state. They lived in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa. In 1877, Carolyn gave birth to their fourth daughter, Grace Pearl. During that time, they were having difficulties financially, but Charles found a job in 1878 as a clerk and a bookkeeper with a, the railroad in the Dakota Territory. The new year, they moved to D. Smith, South Dakota. Laura went to school and made many friends in the community. She also followed in the footsteps of her mother and earned her teaching certificate at the young age of 15. She was two months shy of her 16th birthday when she became head of her class. Even though Laura was busy teaching children, she also had time for romance. An older man named Almanzo Wilder began courting the young woman. He made a homesteader. He was a homesteader whom Laura lovingly nicknamed Manly. While he was 10 years older than her, the two fell deeply in love with each other. Almanzo had such a crush on Laura that he would take her back and forth from D. Smith, where she lived, to the town where she worked which was 12 miles away. The couple made it official and wed in 1885. They settled on land Wilder had claimed and, became, and they became farmers. Life wasn't always easy for the newlyweds and young homesteaders. The first few years of their wedding, they struggled to make a good life for themselves. Their first child, a daughter they named Rose, was born in 1886. In the meantime, they endured terrible weather, drought, illness, that drove him to poverty. Almanzo was hit the hardest. He was a young and vigorous man when they first met. He contracted diphtheria, a bacterial infection. The illness rendered Almanzo partially paralyzed, but as a result, he was unable to perform the duties that was necessary for a wheat farmer. Just when they thought things would, weren't that, uh, bad enough, things got worse in the summer of 1889. While Laura was caring for her three-year-old daughter and taking care of their home, she was also pregnant. In August, she gave birth to their son, who died two weeks later. During the same month, Wilder's home burned down, and they lost their crops due to the drought. They lost their home, their only source of income, and they decided to start over, so they moved to Spring Valley, Minnesota in 1890. Although her husband was still having a difficult time, Laura helped him with his work to get by. They both also made sure to keep their eye open for any opportunities that came their way. In October of 1891, the couple decided to take their daughter and move to Florida. They believed the warm weather would improve Almanzo's health and it would be a good place for farming. But Laura hated it. The state's humidity and the weather wasn't for her. So she returned to De Schmidt. The whole family did in August of 1892. Then the Wilders moved to Mansfield, Missouri in 1894. They bought undeveloped land just outside of town using some savings and called it Rocky Ridge Farm. They made money by selling firewood for only 50 cents. It took seven years for the apple trees they planted to bear fruit. They eventually owned 200 acres of land, sold their home in town, and moved on to the farm. It took them about 20 years to create their successful poultry, dairy, and fruit farm. Her writing career was launched after she was asked to submit an article to the Missouri Rural List in 1990, 1911. She became a permanent colonist and editor through the mid-1920s, and she wrote about everything from home to family. It was 1869 when all the family moved to Kansas on the Osage Indian Reserve. 
It is there that Roar remembered seeing cattle drives through the wide open plains and meeting Indians. In only the years of the time, the family made a return to Wisconsin before heading to Walnut Grove, Minnesota. The image in the stock market crashed uh, crash in 1929. They were able to keep their 200 acre farm, but they lost nearly all of their savings. It was during this time that the Lord devoted most of their time to writing. Getting inspiration from loved ones is one of the greatest feelings ever. Rose's influence was very crucial to Laura's early writings. When Rose became an adult, she had nearly blossomed into a prominent writer under the name Rose Wilder Lane. She was a huge help to her mother in all different ways. While Laura was writing her books, she and Almanzo continued to live at Rocky Ridge Farm. They sold most of all the property, but just kept a few farm animals and spent their time gardening. Almanzo died in 1949 at the age of 92. Roar lived long enough for the following eight years, but friends and neighbors made sure to look in on her. She died in her sleep in 1957, three days after turning 90 years old. She was buried alongside her husband and daughter. She wrote nine books. She was a legend in her own time and kept them all written for us to see to this day.